Well, happy Halloween, everyone. In honor of the spookiest day of the year, let's look into the spookiest matchups for LSU this weekend against the Alabama Crimson Tide. You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, well, thanks for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. Just search Locked on LSU in the YouTube search bar. It'll be the first, first thing that comes up. Hit the subscribe button and you'll get notified as soon as Locked on LSU content drops. So you will not miss a single second of the latest news on your LSU Tigers. Today's edition of Locked on LSU is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Well, let's get into it. Happy Halloween, everybody! One of my favorite days of the year, and not only is it a spooky day of Halloween, it's also an incredibly spooky week, and it's already gotten pretty spooky. On, uh, on Twitter between LSU fans and Alabama fans. And what I think makes this day, this week, this matchup so fun, specifically this week, because we know that this matchup between LSU and Alabama, it's always going to have some juice. It's always, almost always, a showdown of the two best teams in the SEC West. In recent years, it's been essentially almost like a college football playoff qualifying game. It's been an SEC championship game qualifying game. I mean, like when there's, when this matchup matters, I mean, this rivalry is always going to matter because it's LSU and Alabama. I mean, come on. But when this game actually matters, when there are skins on the wall, like that makes this game even better. When this game matters, when the when the outcome of this game could dramatically shift the outcome of either of these team seasons, which this year it will. Last year it did. You beat Alabama, you went to the SEC championship game. I think that just makes college football better. That makes the SEC better. But what I like about this specific matchup, because we we know every year it's gonna be good. What I like about this specific matchup is the matchups in general are just juicy. Like this is what this is what college football is made of. An elite LSU offense going up and against an elite Alabama defense. A suspect Alabama offense that's been struggling isn't as dominant or isn't as electric as maybe we're used to under Bryce Young or a Mac Jones in 2020 against an incredibly suspect LSU secondary that's going to be led primarily by true freshmen. So I think that that's just, that just makes this matchup that much better when you've got good against good and not so great against not so great. So let's get into it. In honor of the holiday today, the spookiest matchups of the weekend, LSU against Alabama. First and foremost, I think, there's two big ones. There's two obvious ones. And this is one of them. It's Alabama's deep balls, Jalen Milrow's ability and really, you know, desire to throw the ball deep against this LSU secondary. We learned yesterday uh, on Monday in Brian Kelly's press conference that Zy Alexander, Denver Harris, and Deuce Chestnut will all be out against Alabama. We know that Denver Harris and Deuce Chestnut are away from the team, and that continues. Zy Alexander left the Army game early, and he will be out against Alabama. So that leaves you with Jeremiah Hughes, a true freshman. Javen Toviano, a true freshman. Ashton Stamps, a true freshman who was out against Army with dealing with a little bit of an injury, but he'll be available and back this week. Leaves you with LaTerrence Welch, a true sophomore, who's only seen action in six games over the last two seasons. And then, of course, Sage Ryan. So you've got an LSU secondary that is statistically one of the worst in college football. And now you lose one of your best starters, if not your best starter in Zy Alexander. That is, uh, it sounds like, I'm not going to say a recipe for disaster, because I don't think that's fair to these young guys who we really haven't seen enough of to make a fair assessment of. But you got inexperienced versus lethal passing attack. No, that's spooky. So I think we know. 
we we know as LSU fans, we've seen how much this past defense has struggled. It's 88th in college football, but also take into account how those numbers might be skewed just a little bit. Going up against one of the worst passing offenses in all of college football in Auburn. They limited them to 150 passing yards, but Oh, yeah, by the way, that was the most passing yards that any other defense in the SEC has given up until that point. That's the second most that that any SEC defense has given up on their entire schedule, second only to Mississippi State. We've seen how much Mississippi State's defense has struggled. And then you go up against Army, which is another one of the worst offenses in all of college football. You shut them out just a couple of weeks ago. So 88th in college football, not great. And even those numbers feel like they might be inflated just a little bit. But let's take a look at the Alabama side of things. Because while we're familiar with LSU, you might not be as familiar with what Alabama has been doing this season. Alabama has 13 40-plus yard plays. Now, I it depends on how you define explosive. You might define it as 15-plus yard plays. You might define it as 20-plus. In my personal no college football belief, football in general belief. I say explosive plays are any plays over 20 plus yards, but I'll extend it even further. I'll double it 40 plus yards. Alabama has 13 on the season. That's good for 17th in the country. Now, LSU, on the other hand, LSU has 17 explosive plays over 40 plus yards. That's the second best in the country, but that's only a difference of four plays, 13 from Alabama and 17 from LSU. That's not really that massive of a difference. Now, of course, four plays of 40 plus yards, that feels like a ton. I mean, that's game changing kind of plays. It's game changing kind of offense. Uh, but just to put that in perspective that Alabama has a, a lot of explosive plays in their repertoire. Just look at Jalen Milrow. When I, I, I said this, I believe, on yesterday's podcast. I'll reiterate it. Jalen Milrow in this Alabama offense really only has two gears, running the football and airing it out. And just look at this, for example, la- two weeks ago. So last week, Alabama was on the bye. Two weeks ago, Alabama hosted Tennessee. Jalen Milrow had a 46-yard touchdown pass to start off the second half. Had a 20-yard pass, a 20-yard gain to set up a field goal. 22-yard pass to set up a touchdown. Against Arkansas, he had a 79-yard touchdown pass. And, oh, yeah, by the way, later in that game, he had a 29-yard touchdown pass. Against Texas A&M, had a 52-yard touchdown pass. And I would look at Arkansas and A&M's defenses and secondaries to be better than LSU's. Now, Arkansas is not really much to to write home about. But A&M statistically has the best defense in the SEC. And they're giving up 52-yard touchdown passes to Jalen Milrow. Dude has got an arm. Now, where he struggles is in the intermediate passing game. Like I said, he's got two gears, running the football and airing it out. But, man, (laughs) Jalen Milrow's arm. His ability and willingness to throw it deep versus a young and inexperienced LSU secondary, that's spooky. But let's continue on with some of the spooky matchups to watch and really, honestly, fun matchups to watch in this LSU-Alabama game coming up this weekend. We'll get into that coming up next. But buying tickets to some of your favorite events, whether it's concerts or theater events or sporting events, games that you want to go to, buying tickets to those events can be so incredibly and unnecessarily stressful. But eliminate stress from the ticket buying process with the game time. Because with game time, it's the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all of the events near you. They've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee. With game time, they take the guesswork out of buying tickets. So true story, real story. My friends and I, some of my friends from LSU, we're all getting together. We're coming back to Baton Rouge for the LSU Florida game. And we're looking for tickets and looking at all different kind of third-party ticket sites, talking with friends who may have tickets. And they were all really expensive. And there were ticketing fees that were over half the price of the tickets themselves. We thought that's ridiculous. And I thought, well, I'm going to go to game time because game time has the best best price guaranteed. And of course they did compared to all of the third-party ticket sites that we looked at. And 
one of the great things about it was I know exactly what our seats are going to look like once we get to the stadium because game time showed us our in seat view. And so I know that I'm not going to get there and be blocked by a pole or have any sort of obstructed view. Having that kind of peace of mind that I've not only gotten the best price, but also I know exactly what I'm getting when I get there. Now that that is just chef's kiss. They are obsessed at game time with finding ways to help you save money on buying tickets. They've got zone deals. So pick the section. Game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. I mean, with ticket prices being as high as they are, getting the best deal possible is so important. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on college for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on college. That is L O C K E D. C-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, well, thanks for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And hey, this college football season, Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. So every single Friday, Locked On will go live at 11 a.m. Eastern. That's 10 a.m. Central on every Locked On College YouTube channel, including this one. So if you're watching on the Locked On LSU YouTube channel, you can check out College Football Kickoff Live on Friday. We'll cover playoff implications, conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Lockdown can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Lockdown College hosts, covering their team every single day. So find Lockdown College Football Kickoff Live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, that's 10 a.m. Central, on any Lockdown College YouTube channel. You will not want to miss it. So in honor of Halloween, the spookiest matchups to look for. This weekend as LSU takes on Alabama. The first one, the Alabama Deep Balls against this suspect, inexperienced, and untested LSU secondary as we look to several true freshmen taking over those cornerback roles since I Alexander, Deuce Chestnut, and Denver Harris will be unavailable. The second spooky matchup that I'm looking at, and this might make you feel a little bit better as an LSU fan, maybe a little bit better about the defense, is the LSU pass rush against the Alabama offensive line. Now, I think we can all agree what we know about this LSU defense is it's been less than impressive, specifically the secondary. But really, I've been disappointed in the defensive line, just looking at the sheer amount of talent that's on the defensive line. And really, more specifically, the LSU front seven, where they've struggled to get pressure and they they struggled to contain, especially mobile quarterbacks, looking at maybe like a KJ Jefferson or a Jackson Dart. LSU right now has 14 sacks on the season. That's just simply not enough. 108th in all of college football. But if that might give you a little bit of encouragement that maybe this front seven, maybe this pass rush could have a breakout kind of game. Alabama is 126th in the country in sacks allowed. They've allowed 35 sacks so far this season. That's over double the number of sacks that LSU's defensive line has recorded. This Alabama offensive line has been brutal. It really has. And it's a young team. But more specifically, it's a young offensive line. They've got a freshman in at left tackle. And I think we, as LSU fans, might be a little bit uh, uh, spoiled when it comes to true freshmen at left tackle. But that's been a weak point in their offense is the offensive line just simply cannot protect Jalen Milrow, which I think is saying even more considering Jalen Milrow is such a mobile quarterback that has the ability and willingness to escape pressure. And he's still been sacked 35 times. So this pass rush, this LSU pass rush, it is going to hurt not having Makai Wingo. I mean, he's your second leading sacker on the season, second only to Harold Perkins. But of course, as we broke down yesterday, when all of the, the injuries were announced, that's just a next man up opportunity for Jordan Jefferson or maybe some other members of this defensive line that are going to have to answer the call. Now that Makai Wingo will be out for the next six weeks. And if you missed it, Makai Wingo went, underwent surgery during the bye week. Not exactly sure at this point, the time of recording, what he got surgery on, but he'll be gone for the next six weeks, certainly out against Alabama. I'm looking at this. 
And I want Harold Perkins to be sitting back and watching film of this offensive line and salivating at the mouth at the opportunities to get after Jalen Milrow. Now, like I just said, I mean, Jalen Milrow can kill you with the deep ball, but in order to throw it deep, he's going to need time. Now, this offensive line doesn't always give him time to do that. Cut that time in half when he, you got Harold Perkins running around on the outside, you know, just, just searching for blood in the water, trying to get after the quarterback. I mean, LSU hasn't necessarily faced elite to offensive lines this season. I think the SEC has an offensive line problem. You know, Arkansas's offensive line is struggling mightily. And it's not like LSU's pass rush really took advantage of that. But also, as we know, LSU's made some defensive adjustments since then. And I think we can maybe hope that the defense looks just a little bit better now that they've made those adjustments. So this is an opportunity for Harold Perkins to get after the quarterback, Greg Penn, another one as well, to get after the quarterback and really truly take advantage of a poor offensive line. And for those guys up front, the more established and the more veteran players, players that have shown the ability to take over the game, to maybe take a little bit off of that young LSU secondary. Because if they're not able to get to the quarterback, if they're not at least able to get pressure on Jalen Milrow, and Jalen Milrow has time to throw it deep all day long, well, now you're just setting up these young freshmen up to fail. Help them out a little bit. Force Jalen Milrow to get the ball out quick. Force some turnovers because Jalen Milrow has been turnover prone so far this season. I made this joke earlier on my national radio show. I said it's like Jalen Milrow every day. His, his, his Saturday game plan, wake up, eat breakfast, get to the facility, put his uniform on, throw an interception. It's just like a checklist that he has every single day. So force him into some uncomfortable positions because – He'll do it. I mean, he's not a quarterback that takes care of the football, but if you give him time, he's going to be able to pick that secondary apart. So the pass rush against this Swiss cheesy Alabama offensive line, I mean, this pass rush is going to have to step up. This pass rush is going to have to have the best day that we've seen them have all season long. More spooky matchups coming up next. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That is $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads and player props, over-unders, and so much more. So check it out on FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, thanks again for making Lock and LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU, we'll have a mailbag. Get those questions in, LSU-related, Alabama game-related, big picture-related, whether it's you know outlook for the SEC championship game or reactions to the college football playoff rankings, re revelation, reveal. Um, anything's on the table. Get those questions in. You can comment them below on the YouTube page, or you can send them in on Twitter at Caroline Fenton one or at locked on LSU. Again, it's Halloween. Happy spooky season. Happy Alabama hate week. So let's get into some spooky matchups. LSU against Alabama. The first one, Jalen Milrose deep passes versus this young and inexperienced LSU secondary Two. the LSU pass rush against Alabama's offensive line. Alabama's offensive line has given up 35 sacks so far this season. They're averaging five or giving up five sacks a game. LSU has only sacked the quarterback 14 times this season. I am looking for a breakout from this LSU front seven and this LSU pass rush. The next one that I'm looking at is really simple and probably the matchup that's going to get talked about the most, that's going to get the most airtime and probably the most obvious. It's Alabama's defense versus LSU's offense. And that's just an, a big, whole, overarching statement looking at both of these teams. But you've got elite on elite 
elite LSU offense on elite Alabama defense. You've got unstoppable force in LSU's offense and immovable object in Alabama's defense. I mean, this is this is truly, I think, one of the best matchups that you can find in college football. The best offense in the country against one of the best defenses in the country. Like, it truly does not get better than this. So it's, it's putting to the test what each of these teams do best. LSU offensively, Alabama defensively. Who gets the better of that matchup, I think, is who wins this football game. If Alabama's defense doesn't show up until the second half, like we saw them do against Texas A&M, like we saw them do against Tennessee, Alabama loses this game. Because when Tennessee's up 13-0 on Alabama, well, LSU's up 21-0 because Jaden Daniels is able to get into the end zone when Joe Milton was not. If Alabama's defense limits or stops what LSU wants to do offensively, which granted, good luck. Because we haven't seen a defense be able to do that for a full 60 minutes all season long. But if Alabama is able to take away one element of Jaden Daniels' game or one element of this offense, you lose. Because that is your team. That is how you win football games. So LSU, again, like I said, number one offense in the country. They're averaging 553 yards a game. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I'm telling myself every single Saturday, don't take that for granted. Because that truly is uh, ridiculous, truly. Alabama's defense is the 17th ranked defense in the country, third in the SEC behind only Texas A&M and Georgia. They're only giving up 306 yards a game. So, who? I mean, someone's got to bend, someone's got to break, and somebody's got to win that battle. This is the best defense that LSU has seen. This is also the best offense that Alabama has seen all season long. Alabama's played Mississippi State, an offense that's been struggling all season long. Alabama's played Arkansas and has beaten Arkansas, but also gave up consecutive scores, unanswered scores in the second half and almost let Arkansas back into the game with them. They faced Texas A&M. And to keep in mind, it was Max Johnson in Texas A&M. And I think Max Johnson's the second best backup quarterback in the SEC behind probably only Garrett Nussmeyer. But that's still a different offense with Max Johnson than it is with Connor Wigman. So this this Alabama defense has not been tested as much as it will be against LSU. No defense in the country that hasn't played LSU has been tested as much as Alabama will be this weekend against LSU. So really overarching, very general statement, Alabama's defense against LSU's offense. But that is... That's the key matchup here. That is the marquee matchup, not just of this game, I think, of the weekend. It doesn't get much better than that. And then finally, the last spooky thing, as an LSU fan, what's scary to me is this matchup of road team coming into Bryant-Denny. LSU on the road at Alabama. LSU versus Bryant-Denny. It's a spooky matchup now. Bryant Denny's not an easy place to play. And look, it's no Tiger Stadium. But there's a reason why it's really difficult to win football games at Bryant Denny. I mean, there's a reason why Nick Saban in his career is 103 and 9 at home. And keep in mind, three of those losses, three of those nine home losses that Nick Saban has suffered so far in his tenure in Alabama came in his first season in 2007. Alabama doesn't lose at home. Alabama won 43 consecutive home games before losing to Texas earlier this season. That's pretty ridiculous. There's also a reason why not very many teams beat Alabama two years in a row. It's because odds are you're going to have to play one of them at Brian Denny. So that's it's uh, that's a tough one. I mean, the environment is not an easy place to play, especially in this matchup, especially given the stakes, especially, you know, primetime game at night. I mean, the place is going to be rocking. It's probably going to be the toughest place that LSU has played all season long. Look, played at Vought Hemingway. That's not necessarily a gauntlet. Look, I don't think Ferro Field in Columbia necessarily gets enough credit for how sneaky, difficult of a place it is to play. But 
That ain't no Bryant Denny. Davis Wade is no Bryant Denny. So that's another kind of, I don't want to say it's underrated because I don't think it's an underrated aspect of it. Whenever you play at Alabama, it's very much so a, a very heavily considered and covered factor of the game, but not an easy place to play now. But look, spookiest matchup of them all. Alabama's defense against LSU's offense. And it's spooky for both sides. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. Like I mentioned on tomorrow's podcast, we will do a mailbag. Get those questions in. Comment them below on the YouTube page, or you can send them out on Twitter. You can DM them. You can tweet me at Caroline Fenton one or at Locked on LSU. We'll also have a, uh, a crossover episode. Locked on Alabama and Locked on LSU. We'll have that later on this week right here on Locked on LSU.